What's up everybody, this is Jesse P from Tiny Whoop, and I'm here to show you how to put your new B-Brain flight controller to use. We're gonna go from start to finish, how to build an entire B-Brain Tiny Whoop, and then how to set it up on the computer. So let's get started. All right, so before we get to this, we're gonna start with a little frame modification. Take your frame and snip these off. I don't know if you guys can see. Right here, I need to snip this baby off. Gone snip this off. Now I'm going to give these a little bit of angles just to make sure they don't press the bind button on the flight controller as you'll see later. Alright, it's perfect. Next, I'm going to take out this hardware, put these little babies in. Flight controller is installed. Let's get the camera out. Cut these babies as short as possible. Save that for later. This is how I strip the wires. No stripping tool necessary. Pretend the wires on the camera and pretend the leaves on the board. I'm going to use this camera mount, so we're just going to feed these through the little hole. I like to put these screws in ahead of time just because it's less likely to fumble around with them. Now we're going straight onto the board. Alright, now power is closest to the edge of the board. Let's start with that one. Looks pretty good to me. I think the camera is installed. So this is what's different about the B-Brain, you guys. As you can see, this is a normal tiny whoop. The props spin outwards like this. I mean, coming out of the front. But when you're flying a B-Brain, it's like every other mini quad you've ever flown. They actually swash in on the front and back out on the sides. That means the motors go in differently. So I'm taking the motor with the black and white wires putting it in the front right and the rear left, and the blue and red wires go in the front left and the rear right. All right, the motors are in. Now we're going to put on the props. Remember, they swash in on the front and back now. So they go in like this. Next, I'm gonna plug these babies in. I give them a twist, like so. Now, I'm gonna put these rubber bands on. You can use the rubber bands that came with the quad, or you can get these like from an orthodontist. Next, I like to twist these wires right here because we're gonna tuck them under. Here comes the tucking part. And that's how you build a thing. Now we're gonna go over to the computer and do the rest. Do the setup, make sure you've got everything right, and then we're gonna show you how to do setup on your transmitter. This first video is gonna show you how to set it up on a Tyrannus. I'll do another one later for Spectrum. So I'm actually gonna set up the transmitter first so we can have it bound for when we check it in the computer later. So, 
I'm going to start by making a new model. First we go over to multi-rotor. Now I'm just going to hit page a whole bunch of times and leave all the channels as they are. Next I'm going to set up the model name. You guys know what I'm going to make this, come on. Next, this part's important. We're going to change D16 to D8. We want mode D8. And while we're here, let's go ahead and bind it. So the trick to binding it is pressing this little button right here while you're plugging in a battery. It's kind of hard with one person, but it can be done. So first you turn on bind. You're going to hear your transmitter start to make little chirps. And now here comes the tricky part. I'm going to use tweezers to hold the bind button in and connect the battery. At this point it should be bound. So I'm going to unplug the quad and hit enter again to turn off bind. So binding is complete but we still have one more thing to do in the transmitter. So we're going to go to the mixer page and down in channel 5, scroll down to source, hit enter, and then flip whatever switch you want to work to arm your quad. I like the SA switch up here, that's just my preference. Hit enter again, exit all the way out, and the transmitter is set up. So if you guys don't have Betaflight already, it's really quick and easy download. I'll put a link in the video description, but go ahead and download it and add it to Google Chrome. And um, next, you're going to need to get these drivers here. This is what's going to allow it to uh, recognize the serial port. So download these drivers, install them all, and then restart your computer, reopen Betaflight, and then use your best mini USB data cable to connect to your PC. I've had some problems with inferior cables, so if you're having trouble, the cable is one place to check. I'm going to just click connect, and I'm in. So I can wiggle it around, and I can see it's still moving. All right, looking good. So here in the receiver tab, there's a few things that are wrong. First of all, you can turn your transmitter on, wiggle the sticks around, and see how this is. But before you do that, I recommend changing this to AE. Click save. Next we're going to go to modes. This particular flight controller, I already set up my modes, but it's really easy for you to do. I have three sections here. So when it goes to arm, I click add range and I set that the arm range from 1200 all the way to 2100. That means that when my switch is at the lowest position, it is not armed. Next, I like a little bit of angle mode. You guys know that. So I add a range from 1200 to, what is this, 1700? That means that when the switch is in the middle, I'll be in an auto level angle mode. Finally, I add an air mode range from 1200 all the way up. And that means that when my stick is in the third position, I'll be in full manual mode with control at zero throttle. Now click save. Disconnect. Now disconnect it from the computer and you are ready to fly. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Make sure you tag me in your videos so I don't miss them. Thanks guys, enjoy.